come with me and we've got a Freelander 2 TV4 with a turbo failure. Now the four codes that we've got is a P2263. Now on this vehicle I diagnosed it probably about three weeks ago and I'm only just now getting around to doing it. I have already done, before anybody says anything, uh, checked for boost leaks and various other things and I have put it down to the actual turbo. Now because we have to remove the subframe on this vehicle, we have removed the lower steering column bolt, lifted the shaft out and I have put a steering, uh, the seat belt through the steering wheel like this. Now the reason why I do this and I get called upon all the time, leave the key in the ignition. Yeah you can do, but what happens if you need to start that car and all of a sudden the steering wheel turns, you're going to be knackering that clock spring. Just put the seat belt through like that, it saves a lot of moisture. Now before we fully raise this vehicle we're going to take the front wheels off, tracker ends and the anti-roll bar links and we're going to remove the bottom ball joints. Now we're underneath the vehicle, before we remove the subframe we need to just disconnect the power steering pipes on here, there's a few little clips. Two subframe bolts at the front, uh, engine mount down underneath and a few little plugs and we can get the subframe down. Now as you can see we have got the lovely subframe off which is right by there. Look at all this room that we have got around the back here and how to gain access to the turbine. Now one of the next stages that I'm going to be doing is removing the complete exhaust system off the vehicle. And there you go, that is the exhaust off. Just look how much stuff you've got to take off. It's absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, let's make a start now on removing the turbo. First thing we need to do is remove all these 10 mils and get this heat shield out of the way. Now as you can see I have got the heat shield off the uh, manifold, but it, it wasn't as easy as that. We've got that heat shield right going around the turbo and the EGR valve at the top and you've got one little bolt you've got to take all that EGR valve off just to get that one bolt ridiculous right let's crack on now and get this turbine off and there you have it that is one turbo off it has done my head in now what I've done I have split it open just to show you what has actually failed on this turbine now this is a variable vein turbo and a lot of you may not have ever seen inside one of these now this uh, control arm here is designed to move them little fins inside there to allow you to build exhaust pressure up now as you can see as I'm moving that little arm in there them fins ain't moving so the connecting rod in there is snapped or something snapped anyway and just like that, that turbo now uh, we've got it on well my little trolley as you can see and I've stripped all the oil and coolant feed pipes to it I'm going to get this newer now and get it all assembled up. Now before we bolt it all back up, uh, we've got the oil feed pipe, uh, the banjo bolt. Now if you have a little look, it's got a little filter in it. As you can see, it is actually broken. So what we're going to be doing is taking it out and leaving it out. We've also got some new studs as well to go into the turbo. Just screw them in, get your stud extractors. And then you can just, they don't need to be emergency tight, just nip them and that's it, perfect. And that there now is one turbo ready to be fitted back to the vehicle. Uh, we have got a new crush ring there that fits in between the manifold and the turbo. Right, let's get it back on the car. Right, let's go and get it on the car. I don't know whether you'll be able to see this. It should just hook in into place. All right. Like so, just like that. And there you have it, that is one turbocharger now fitted back to the engine, everything's nice and tight. We've given everything a bit of a clean down with a bit of uh, brake and clutch clear. So if we do have a leak, we can see it straight away. Now, the most trickiest part, again, all built back together, and I'm not looking forward to putting the CGR and EGR cooler back on. Anyway, I'm not gonna bore you, I'm just gonna smash it out. Well, we're getting there slowly. As you can see, we have built everything back up the top there. It is such a fiddle doing those, honest to God. I think the next time I do one of these, the whole engine's coming out. Right, so then I've got the exhaust and the subframe to go on and we can connect the prop shaft back up. Yeah, let's get cracking. And that's it, the subframe is now back on. We need to lower it down, put the ball joints tracker end on, then we can drop it down and get it started. That is now 99.9% .9 put back together. Let's jump in the vehicle now and do a little bit of reprogramming. And all this does is tell the vehicle that it's had a new turbo and it just resets the adaptions for the actual motor that's fit to the side of the turbo. And as you can see, it is complete. And there you have it, that car now is back up and running. Let's send it up and we're gonna check for leaks. Well, I don't know whether you lot are gonna be able to see, it is a little bit noisy underneath here, but it is all 
nice and dry. Let's get it off the ramp and take it for a drive. There you go, now we're out in the car. Um, everything seems to be okay. I'm just gonna give it a third gear pull now. And I also am re recording live data at the same time. And I'll show you when I get back everything working. Perfect. Now I know that the test drive went okay. We can have a little look at the live data and make sure that everything is working as it should. And as you can see, it's all rising and falling and we're getting good boost pressure now. And there you go, that is one turbocharger fitted to a Land Rover TD4. Um, I have got a few little the little trims to put on over there, also an oil and filter. And yeah, we're just gonna check it over in the morning. And that's it, let's get it sent.